What's up, everybody? My name is Kason, and welcome back to the PUDL. And this is week number one of playoffs. Um, a couple of things to throw out really quick. First of all, you're not going to see my face on the screen for this team preview, but you will see my face on the battle screen. Um, just a couple of things. I ran a little low on time this week. I was incredibly sick over the weekend. I've had the worst stomach bug that I've ever had in my entire life. That is not exaggerating. It was just absolutely brutal. I'm feeling so much better now, and I'm very, very thankful for that. And a massive shout out to my opponent this week, Mr. Mag, coach of the Castellia Moths. Um, as well as Kaz, who runs the league. So they are uh, honestly tremendous people for allowing me to basically postpone the match and play when I was feeling better. So massive, massive thank you to them. Uh, I'm just going to record this real quickly. I've already done the match with Mr. Mag, um, but I didn't have enough time to create the slides and stuff like that, and I wanted to get this video out to you guys as soon as I possibly could. So just a quick preview of the screen. This is on Pokemon Showdown rather than the normal slides I do, but uh, in the future, if I do any more Draft League videos, you will see my slides on the screen. I also uh, apologize because my Week 8 video has not been out yet. I do plan on releasing that as well. Um, but again, I've just been really low on time and then being sick it was just really brutal. So that being said, this is the team that we are taking into his roster. So first of all, we are going to start off with Sand Rooster, uh, Ahar Lucha, our Halucha, excuse me. So he is the ability on burden. He has the item power herb. And uh, the reason for this item here is essentially so that we can use the move Sky Attack, which is something that almost nebby, nobody ever uses. Uh, I'm honestly really excited to hopefully use this uh, in this fight as even though it's only 90% accuracy, it's 140 base power, which is ridiculous. Um, it also has 30% chance to flinch and a high crit. So it's a crazy good ability. The reason people don't use it is it's a charge. It's a two turn hit. And this is not like fly where you fly up into the sky and avoid damage on the first turn. You literally just charge. It's basically like solar beam. But the thing about the item power herb here is it makes it so that those two turn attacks happen in one turn, uh, which I'm hoping to be able to catch them off guard a little bit with a sky attack. And the reason I'm running sky attack instead of something like acrobatic acrobatics is because at plus two with the swords dance a sky attack can kill his galarian slow king pretty much regardless of what build that he is running whereas acrobatics plus two uh, it's probably not going to happen so that is why we're running that we're also running close combat because it's really good coverage into his team and stone edge very specifically for his thunderous in terms of the ev spread here we have 200 with a jolly nature this essentially allows us to outspeed everything on his team not named meowscarada and then after we pop the unburdened boost uh, we will outspeed everything that is plus one speed uh, or plus two speed considering the slush rush alolan sand slash we have 252 investment into attack and 56 to the hp just for a little bit of all the second member of our team this week is 25th bam our ogre pond cornerstone obviously rocking the ability sturdy this is probably going to be our designated lead so with the ev spread of 252 plus jolly 252 attack and 80 or four rather in the hp stat this is just strictly offensive um the sturdy ability allows it so that we're going to live a hit no matter what but honestly, Ivy Cudgel just hits his team really, really hard. Most teams are weak to Rock in general, but uh, Rock hits his team pretty well in general. So Ivy Cudgel, we basically want to just click this as much as we possibly can. We also have Trailblaze here because if he's not running Choice Scarf, uh, on any of like his fast mons like Meowscarada or Thunderous. This basically guarantees us that at a plus one speed boost after a Trailblaze, we will outspeed anything on his team, which is really, really nice. Uh, I believe including a, uh, a Lowland Sand Slash in the snow. I'm not 100% sure of that, but I'm pretty confident here. We're running max speed. We don't technically have to be running max max speed, but I'm, it's basically either this or like one point lower because we need to be able to outspeed something on his team that I remember is 108 base speed. <laughs> I think it's the Thunderous. I, I don't remember offhand, but there's something I don't actually it's not Thunderous. I, maybe it's Keldeo. It's something else is like 108 base speed. And we need to make sure that we outspeed that. But basically running Ivy Cudgel for coverage, Trailblaze to boost our speed. We have Taunt very specifically for the Galarian Slow King because it can run things um, like setup moves uh, to basically boost its stats. It can also run Chili Reception and Trick Room. We really don't want it doing any of that. And we have Sword Stance basically to pump ourselves up. So we don't have a ton of coverage here, but if something just lets us boost up our speed or get a Sword Stance, like Ivy Cudgel can mostly just kill most of his members anyway. So this is our designated lead and I'm hoping to put in some work with it. The next Pokemon is our Seraledge, uh, AKA Turambar, running the weakness policy. This is the second time that we've ran this, island, uh, this item. Last time we ran it, it worked actually really, really well with the ability weak armor with bulk up bulk up a lot of times can boost our defense to plus one allowing us to live certain super effective hits from the other side especially things like an earthquake from an alolan sand slash um 
even without plus one, we should live an earthquake from that sand slash, but at plus one, we should live it even if it's terra ground. I don't think there's a chance in hell that he will run terra ground because I have so much water on my team. I think it's much, much more likely that he goes terra electric, uh, which makes me feel even more confident about this setup. But honestly, fire and ghost coverage into his team is really, really fantastic. So if I'm able to get a bulk up off, I can endure a super effective hit or something if I need. This thing could easily take over if I get that weak armor proc. For the speed investment, we've got 232 plus puts us at 290 this essentially makes it so that once we have the weak armor we are faster than a plus one meows karata guaranteed and essentially uh faster than almost or faster than anything below the turn bar in the base speed stat as well so we're basically just covering for both of those at the same time next up is ram 9 our glass trio really excited for this set this week we've got max hp 200 into defense and 56 into speed, which is a really weird speed investment. Uh, but this essentially allows us so that after we use a trailblaze, we can actually outspeed like half of his roster, depending on what he brings. So if he brings like the bottom half of speed tiers of his mons, we will outspeed him after one single trailblaze, which this thing hits so damn hard. If we are starting to outspeed things as well, uh, we can really, really quickly become a huge problem for the enemy team. Uh, that being said, we more so want to guarantee that we outspeed something like a Galarian Slowking, who's very likely to run min speed. And the fact that these two mons have the same base speed, we just want to make sure that we're really confident we will go faster than him um, because we want to be able to hit him before he goes for anything like a Trick Room or something like that. This uh, Glass Trier, I'm not sure if I'm going to Terrastalize it or not, but we have the Terra Electric just in case as Bolt Beam coverage is just really good into his team. However, the fact that he has Snow on his team and he has a Trick Room option means this thing can go absolutely nuts if he sets either one of those up. So if he brings Glaring Slow King, which he has brought every single week up to this point, so I'd be shocked if he doesn't, uh, this thing is basically our trap card. <laughs> so if he sets Snow, he sets Trick Room, this thing is ready to go absolutely nuts in either one of those. Um, we have the Assault Vest to be able to take special hits so even though we have no special defense investment this 256 is actually a lie it's basically 1.5 times this amount so we're really looking at like 382 i don't know if i'm doing that math right 384 something like that um so yeah this thing is bulky as hell and it can easily just go crazy if he is left unattended two months left we have the greninja and we are rocking choice scarf now i didn't want to have to run choice scarf here because honestly greninja outspeeds every single pokemon on his team not named meows karata um but i thought it was really really important because now this forces him essentially um, to run Choice Scarf Meowth Karata, or else I can just basically kill it in one hit to start. So I wanted to have the fastest thing on the field. That was really important to me, especially considering the fact that Meowth Karata can hit a lot of my team pretty, pretty well. So bringing this thing, Choice Scarf, Protean, Sludge Wave, and Dark Pulse uh, are really just good coverage into his team. Dark Pulse is really important because even though we are Protean and we'll change type based on what move we use, I really wanted to be able to keep the dark typing uh, specifically because he has Prankster Thunderous on the other side. If he goes for a Prankster attack like Thunder Wave or something like that, if we keep the dark typing, we will be immune to Prankster. So if you guys don't know what that means, Prankster uh, basically jumps up in priority. It was similar to when we faced a Grim Snarl in a different week. It means that you basically get to cheat the system in terms of speed. So he can go Thunder Wave before our Choice Scarf user. But if we are dark type, it will not work on us, which means uh, he is kind of SOL in that. That spot so we can u-turn for pivoting options we have spikes to also make sure that we can get some hazards up and also make us uh, basically invulnerable to that electric typing that thunderous wants to click and sludge wave is just a really really powerful attack we're max speed we're max special attack we're not screwing around here when there's no bulk or anything and that is pretty much all this thing is meant to come in and do. And last but not least is MRDCR, our Chalodon. This thing is an absolute tank as well, very similarly to Glastro. We're running double Assault Vest this week. So 252 HP, 60 plus with a bold nature defense, 180 force but death. This thing is just bulked out as much as I possibly can. And running 12 speed because he does have another Pokemon on his team at 85 base speed. And just in case he's running zero, I would like to put in just a tiny bit of effort and be able to maybe outspeed that on the other side. So that is basically the, the goal there. Or if he's trying to out, uh, outspeed or speed creep a just base 85 speed Pokemon without any investment, that is why we put 12 in there. In terms of the moves, we have Draco Meteor because other than Florges, honestly, this hits his team pretty decently. Body Press is just really good, especially if we're able to get any sort of defense up upgrades. Heavy Splam is very specifically here for Florges. If I don't bring this move, we can very easily get walled by that. That thing and i do not want to have to deal with it and the final move is dragon tail 
this is also mainly for setup Pokemon. So if he goes for like a Swords Dance or something like that on something, or if he goes for a nasty plot with the Prankster Thunderous, I basically just want to Dragon Tail it and get it the hell out of there before it is able to just sweep my team. So that is the entire roster, guys. And let's go ahead and jump into the fight, and you will see my face on the screen very shortly. All right, guys, we're about to load into the fight here, going up against Mr. Mag and the Castellia Moths. I am uh, I'm super excited. I'm super excited. This is my first ever playoff match. One thing I wanted to say, um, huge shout out to Mr. Mag and also Kaz. Uh, if you guys didn't know, I don't know if I said it in the preview, <laughs> but uh, I was super, super sick this weekend. Like, I I threw up a lot. It was really, really gross, and it was really, really terrible. I feel so much better now, but um, they basically allowed me to play my match late, so massive thank you to them, and I'm hoping to make it worth their while. I'm hoping that we can put on a good show here. So, okay, so taking a look at what he brought. He brought Thunderous, Thunderous Eye, Sand Slash, Meowth Tatsugiri, Slowking Keldeo. So that is mostly what I thought. The Keldeo um, makes sense because if I brought Rain, he would be strong. Tatsugiri is probably Storm Drain, but this is why I didn't bring Rain, because I thought Tatsugiri would kind of eat that up, and I didn't want to play the Weather War against Galarian Slowking. I think I lead Bam here. Major threats that I'm worried about on his team. Thunderous is really good into my team in general, especially if he's Prankster. I didn't bring Ndidi. I thought about bringing Ndidi because of the Prankster, but honestly, I thought most of his... Um, like elevated priority moves that he would use are probably not attacking moves. They're probably something like Nasty Plot or stuff like that. Um, you know, Substitute, whatever, weird stuff like that. So Psychic Terrain really doesn't prevent that. So other than pre uh, preventing Prankster Thunder Wave, that was really the only thing. And I'm hoping that I don't need it. So he leads Dorothal first. This is Galarian Slowking. So now I'm pretty happy that I brought Ogre Pun as the lead. I think I want to taunt. I could Trailblaze to speed up or I could switch. I don't want to do that. If I'm not going to taunt now, when am I going to taunt? The whole reason I brought this for this fight was for Galarian Slowking, so I think I just do this because even though Chili Reception and Trick Room both are not actually that bad for me because either one I can go into my Glastrier, I would prefer to save him for a switch into a special attacker. This thing is a special attacker, but I don't think it's going to attack. Um... It doesn't run a lot of attacking moves typically. However, this thing is like, I think, Mr. Mag's kill leader, so he might run some really weird sets. It could be like a Calm Mind set or something. He goes for Future Sight, so it makes me eat my words. It is an attack, but this isn't going to hit for a couple turns, which is fine. Um, and I need to double check the ruling on this. Does this hit next turn or the following turn? Okay, so this Future Sight damage is not going to come in this turn. It's going to come in the following turn. So I think I just click Ivy Cudgel here. I don't know why I wouldn't click Ivy Cudgel, because everything on his team doesn't want to take this. Um, Keldeo is the only one that's going to resist this, so I think I just Ivy Cudgel for free. This is going to be probably like half health on pretty much anything that switches in other than Keldeo. And if he makes that call um, into a grass Pokemon, and like just well done to him. So yeah, we'll see what wants to take this. He's taunted. So yeah, he was Future Sight, and he got taunted. I'm curious to see what else he could have gone for here. The fact that he didn't attack does kind of make me think that he doesn't have a poison attack, which is good for me. Ivy Cudgel going to come out. This is going to wreck this Meowth actually. This is a great start for me. Meowth is the only thing that can outspeed um, Greninja. Mine is Scarfed, so unless his is Scarfed, it doesn't matter anyway. But honestly, getting this thing is re really low is a great start, because a lot of these things run Focus Sash. So now I'm tempted to click Trailblaze here, but I think that's greedy because I think Triple Axel kills. Okay, yeah, so depending on the set that he is, Triple Axel can just one-shot me here. It gets through my Sturdy because it's a triple hitter. Um, and I don't really want to sacrifice this thing off. Even though this was meant to be a lead to just stay in, I think I go MRDC here. Because if he goes U-turn which I think he will. We're going to get a plus one defense boost. If he goes triple Axel, which is like the greedier play, we're going to get a plus three defense boost. Either way, great news for us. U-turn is the move that comes out. Okay, so he's going to switch out. So he gets the priority to bring in who he wants, but honestly, a plus one defense boost for 30 HP on a body press user is pretty damn good trade for me. So I'm very happy with this start. Meowth's Grotto's are really chipped and we're plus one defense our Chaladon. This is uh, this is pretty ideal. So I'm curious to see who he brings in here. My guess is either Keldeo or Thunderous, I would think. Because um, I don't think Galarian Slowking can touch us. He's not going to want to bring Sand Slash in until he has the snow up. So it's Mr. Electric. So that is the Thunderous. So this thing is probably Prankster. The Future Sight is going to hit us. I actually forgot about that, but that's perfect. That gives us another plus one defense boost. So now we're plus two. 
The only thing is body press is not going to do much damage at all here, but I kind of want to fire off. I don't want to fire off a Draco Meteor. Dragon Tail also seems enticing, though, because if this thing goes for a nasty plot, um, we could just basically kick him out after he goes for that boost. And this is one of the only Pokemon that can kind of do something to us. Not in terms of damage, but just more so to be annoying, like it can Thunder Wave. I, honestly, if I'm him, I'm probably going Prankster Thunder Wave, right? Why would I not if I'm him? Because you want to try and paralyze this thing, slow it down at least. Yeah, I think he's going to go Thunder Wave. So I don't really want to drag until I think I can wait a turn. If he goes for a Nasty Plot, we're Salt Fest. We should live a hit anyway, of regardless of what he sends. We can always uh, drag until later. So I think I'm just going to click Draco Meteor for extra damage. I think that's the play. So he does go Thunder Wave. Okay, so... So we're going to get parried. Please no full para. Please break through. Draco Meteor would be so much damage here. And it does get full parried. Man, that's rough. 25% chance, folks. It Dude, I swear it's not a 25% chance. It always feels like that. Um, now I kind of feel like I have to Dragon Tail, though. Because if I get RG Hex to second turn in a row and he goes for a Nasty Plot, I could be in trouble. He goes for knockoff. That was a ton of damage. Why was it so much damage? That was a crit. That makes sense. Wow, that is so unlucky. And another para. Wow, dude, this is brutal. This is brutal. Um, Man, two pairs in a row and a crit. We were plus two defense. We would have eaten that knock up, knock off like nothing. Now we're half health, with, we're plus three defense, but a body press is still not going to kill this thing because it resists. I can't really switch though. I kind of just have to stay in and take my lumps with this thing. This sucks. I feel like we should be in a really good spot at plus three, but kind of doesn't matter. Now I feel like... I actually probably didn't need to Dragon Tail here, but I think he could switch. And if he switches and we call that and swap out who he actually wants in, that could be a good thing. I probably should have just Draco Meteored for damage. Or honestly, Body Press. But if he stays in, the Body Press is not the best case. I'm just hoping we don't get paired a third time in a row, honestly. That's what I'm hoping for. If we already get two in a row with a crit, please do not make it three times. I need this thing to put in a little bit of work here. It feels like it's set up so well and it's not being able to do anything. Please kill this thing. Please. Guys, um, I'm no math magician. I am actually pretty good at math. 25% chance times three. Tell me the odds of that. I think it's like one and a half. One and a half percent chance of getting paired three times in a row. That's not including the crit, which is like a one in 16. The odds of that crit plus three misses or three paralyzes is like 0.1% or something stupid. Okay. It's fine. We still have five healthy mons. It just sucks because this thing can probably take us out with a triple axel. I would think, uh, no, no it won't, because it won't crit. We're plus three defense, we're fine. The best thing it could do is flower trick. This thing actually can't hurt us really. I can just body press freely, right? What am I missing here? Unless it goes, this thing gets like spikes and toxic spikes too. It could go for setup for hazards. I don't know what else this thing would do unless he's getting super greedy. He does go for the spikes, okay, so. A bit unfortunate that Hazard comes in. This isn't a huge deal. It's more unfortunate for our Ogre Pond, who's fully healthy. Because now this is going to break his sturdy when he comes in. We don't have Horn Leech. We do get a kill on the board, though. So MRDC finally breaks through fourth time on the para. Finally gets a kill. So we're up 6-5. It feels like we should be up a lot more than this, but that's okay. We're going to get through it. It's a little sushi. I was going to say, that's got to be Tatsugiri. Now the problem is we have no more assault vests, which means there's no way in hell we live a Draco Meteor. But the only person who can swap into a Draco Meteor is Ram 9. And I don't really want to do that yet. I would rather save him for if he sets up the snow so that I have my own Pokemon there, or if he sets up Trick Room. I think I just have to take my lumps here. It's unfortunate. I feel like our Chaladon could have picked up multiple KOs this game, if not for the full Parahax. But yeah, we're gonna drop to a Draco Meteor. The thing is, though, this is not the worst case, because now he's minus two. He's minus two special attack, which means we basically have a free switch. I can go into Ogre Pond here. I could get a Trailblaze up for a plus one speed boost. He will either switch into something and take a Trailblaze, I'll get faster, or I'm basically just going to uh, kill this thing in two hits, no problem. So we'll see what he goes for. So he has everybody left but Meowskarada. I go for Trailblaze here every time. I don't know why I wouldn't. Um, I could try and make a prediction with an Ivy Cudgel, but it doesn't really make sense to, because with Meowsparata out of the picture, um, and we know that Thunderous isn't Choice Scarfed, 
This means that a plus one speed boost Ogre Pond will outspeed every single thing on his team, even if it's Choice Scarfed. Um, I don't think we outspeed Sand Slash in the snow if he's Slush Rush. So he does swap, which is perfectly fine. But he might not expect this Trailblaze Pony Boy. That's tell me that's Keldeo. Oh, let's go, dude. This is so good. Trailblaze is going to be plus one speed boost. That is more than half, which means we can just Trailblaze again. Um, this is wonderful. I could get greedy for a sword dance and pretty good switch, but there's no way in hell I'm going to do that. I'm I'm 100%. I got to click Trailblaze again. So Trailblaze comes off. We are now plus two speed. Keldeo is down, and that is awesome to see. Hey, we get a crit. Not that that one mattered at all. It definitely did not matter, but uh, we got a little bit of RNG on our side for once. We're now plus two speed, so we hella outspeed everything. Honestly, if we could get an opportunity to swords dance, we could legitimately just like win this game. But he does have thunderous prankster. Now, the nice thing about this is even if I'm actually surprised he doesn't go into that, to be honest, um, I'm surprised he doesn't prankster thunder wave here. Why does he go into this here? Unless he's terra ground expecting the Ivy cudgel. I'm not sure why he goes into this. Does is he like choice band? There's no way he kills with an iron head, right? OK, so if he's max attack adamant, he can kill me with an iron head. If not, he has to be choice banned. So he's Terra Electric. Um, I don't know why he terra there. I really don't know why he terra there. That didn't really make sense unless... Yeah, I don't know what he's trying to dodge in terms of attack. That seems like a bit of a misplay to be, if I'm completely honest. Iron Head does come out. We do die. Is that a crit? It's not. Okay, so this thing is either Adamant Nature or Choice Banded. I don't know which, uh, but it's one of them. It's not Jolly. Jolly should not kill us from that range, at least unless I'm calcing wrong. But now, how do I want to play this? With it being Terra Electric now, it's nice that we know that at least, but I don't think I one-shot it with anything um, other than maybe Maverick, actually, because this thing's special defense is terrible. It's got really good physical defense, so I think I go Maverick here, Choice Scarf. And now I'm trying to think. So Dark Pulse seems like the best damaging tool. Also... Wait, this is actually so good. Also, if I go Dark Pulse here, I want to get Greedy instead of Spikes, but I think Dark Pulse makes a ton of sense because he probably switches in Thunderous here. And if he does, if he goes for Prankster T-Wave, it's not going to work on me because I'll still be Dark type. I don't want to switch out of my Dark type, ideally, because this is the only thing that can ignore Prankster. And Dark Pulse will definitely kill this thing from this range unless he's AV, like Adamant AV, but that would be a really weird set, I feel like. It actually wouldn't be that weird of a set, I guess, but I would think he'd want to be Jolly Out speed stuff. Yeah, I think I just click Dark Pulse here because if he's, I think he's going to switch into something. I don't think he's going to allow this thing to just die. Not without getting the snow up first. That would be a really weird play, for, I would think. He does swap. Okay. We also don't know if this thing is Slush Rush or um, Snow Cloak, though. It could be dodgy. That honestly would be worse for me than the speed variant. Dark Pulse into Thunderous, though. This is great because now he cannot Prankster T-Wave. Well, that's assuming that he is Prankster. Wait, what berry is this? What is he eating? Roat Berry. What the F is a Roat Berry? I actually don't know because that did not mitigate dark damage. A Roat Berry deals damage to the opposing Pokemon if they're hit by a special attack. That's got to be new. I didn't even know that existed. That's really cool. Um, but now we just Dark Pulse again. We're Choice Scarfed into it. This still almost half. Um, yeah, I have no reason to switch here. So if he goes for a Thunderbolt, based on my calc here, we have a chance to live. And we definitely have a chance to live. So I think I just Dark Pulse again and try and get Chip because I think the rest of my team cleans up and he forgets or he doesn't know. He doesn't know that Thunder Wave doesn't affect Dark Types, or uh, that Prankster doesn't. That's actually so good for us. He doesn't get any damage down. Oh, man. I'm sorry, Mr. Mag. I'm not sure if you knew that or just forgot or what, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, Prankster does not affect Dark Types. So we just get a free kill here unless he sw swaps. He does not. He realized it real quick. Oh, man. That's a shame. I'm sorry, Mr. Mag. Dark Paul's going to take him out, though. And we're in pretty good shape now. I think we're in really good position to take this game over. And this is now... What do we have? Is it 5v3? 4v3. V okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because we lost our challenge on and bam. I think I go Ram 9 here into the Tatsugiri. I do this every time because I want to save my Choice Scarf user for the end. I, there's a very real situation where I could just clean up with Greninja in the end game. There's no reason for me to sack this thing off. If this thing goes for a Draco Meteor again, it's going to be minus two in front of Assault Vest. That is best case scenario. 
It goes for Rapid Spin. Interesting. I forgot that thing even got that. So, interesting enough, it goes for Rapid Spin here. Yeah, I forgot that thing even got that. I think I just Ice Cold Crash. I don't want to Terra. I don't want to reveal that I'm electric. Also, if he does set up the snow, I would like to stay ice type because I would like to have an increased defense boost against the Sand Slash. That is best case scenario. So I think I Ice Cold Crash here. I'm thinking Ice Cold Crash deals neutral to everything now because Sand Slash is already Terra Electric. So yeah, everything takes neutral damage from this, which means it's going to hit everything hard as long as it hits. Please tell me my bad RNG is over and we don't miss this attack. And if this thing goes for a Draco Meteor, we're honestly in such a good spot because we're going to soak it insanely well with our Assault Vest. This thing is so damn bulky. It does go Draco Meteor. It does land. It's going to be minus two. We took 140 damage from that Draco. That is beautiful. So it's now minus two. Ice Cold Crash going to come out. I don't think this kills, but it, yeah, it does a lot though. 60%. And now, so now I'm torn. Here's the thing. This thing really doesn't threaten me makes me kind of want to go for a Stomping Tantrum because Stomping Tantrum might not kill. Um, it'll be close. I don't think it kills, but it does more damage to either one who swaps in and he gets a Hydro Pump and he misses. So finally, one of the RNGs go in my favor. After the three Paras and the crit, he gets a Hydro Pump miss. The 20% uh, chance Hydro Pump miss. Unfortunate for him. Honestly, would not have done a whole lot of damage. Um, but still good for me, obviously. Now we're plus one attack. And I think Glastria might just be able to take this game over a little bit. Because Glare and Slow King is going to struggle here. I don't know what offensive attacks it has other than Future Sight. I have to imagine it has Chili Reception. If it goes for Trick Room, like, it should... It would outspeed me under Trick Room. Oh, that's fine. I still don't want to Electric Terra Blast. The only downside to clicking Stomping Tantrum here is, is that it has a chance to miss. But it's only 5%. I think I'd just go for it. Oh, wait, no, it doesn't. Stomping Tantrum, I think, is 100. I think I'm thinking of high horsepower. We do a ton of damage here, actually. Chili Reception comes out, which is honestly perfectly fine. Unless um, Sand Slash is Snow Cloak. We're in, like, a really good spot here. I, honest to God, think the only way that we can lose this is if he's Snow Cloak and he dodges a ton of attacks. If he's Slush Rush and he's just faster, I think we win. Hold on, I need to check. Okay, guys, with this stat spread we have, unless I'm miscalking, I think unless he's choice banned, we legitimately live in Iron Head here in the snow because we basically have a plus one defense boost. That is how tanky Glastrier is. So here's the thing. Terra Electric guarantees that we live it even through choice band, but if he predicts that and goes for Earthquake, we're in trouble. I think we stay with the ice defense boost and we just stomping tantrum here. And I think we kill, and I think we live in Iron Head. As long as we do not flinch, we live with 33 HP. Comes through. Let's go, dude. Oh my gosh. Sand Slash is gone. We outspeed the Slow King in Snow. We're now plus two. I think Terra Blast just kills. I think we just win. Um, I didn't expect to just like sweep with, with Ram 9 here, but I think we just did it. I, I don't know what he would do here. Um, I don't think he has enough offensive firepower. Maybe he lives a hit. I don't think so. I plus two, plus two neutral. This thing is a monster. I think we just clicked Terra Electric Terra Blast here. All right, let's do it for the flavor. We got to show off what Terra we were this game. Plus two Terra Blast uh, should do it. And that is going to be it, guys. I think this is going to be the end of the game, unless there is something crazy unforeseen that um, I didn't see, obviously. I think last year just popped off here with three straight kills at the end. A couple of big things. Um, obviously, we had some unlucky RNG at the end. Uh, a little unfortunate he missed the Hydro Pump. I don't know how much that would have mattered in the grand scheme of things. It honestly might have mattered a little bit. I think we would have still won regardless because Choice Scarf Greninja outspeeds both of these guys as we do win this. Um, but yeah, I don't think it would have mattered. The Hydro Pump would have made it so that Sand Slash would have killed Glastrier. But basically Greninja would have came in killed with a Dark Pulse. Even if he sw swaps to Slow King, we kill with two straight Dark Pulses. So the only way we could have lost that is if he was Slush Ru or uh, Snow Cloak and somehow we missed hits, um, but we didn't. So, man, shout out to Mr. Mag again to him and Kaz. Thank you so much for allowing me to play this match late. I really super appreciate it. Um, this weekend, I felt worse than I've ever felt in my entire life. So thank you for allowing me to postpone and thank you for allowing me to play. It was a super fun game. Shout out to Mr. Mag. Um, well done. Honestly, I feel bad about the, the prankster slip up. I think it probably just slipped his mind. It's one of those things that uh, people don't always think about, but... Uh, 
yeah, it was a hell of a fun time, and I'm really excited to be making it another week. Um, I, I guess I'll spoil it. My last week of the regular season, you probably figured out, I did lose. Uh, I'm pr still going to try and post the video, but I did lose, so it really feels good to win in the playoffs here and make sure to keep the season going. So really go hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.